What do you know about those triangles? They're congruent, right? That's the definition of congruent triangles. Corresponding sides are congruent, and so are corresponding angles. Everything's the same. That definition is going to change today when we start talking about two triangles that are similar. Okay? Two triangles that are similar to each other. All right? So let's start out with naming this one ABC and this one DEF. So what's the, big, what's the big difference between similar versus congruent? Well, first thing, corresponding angles are still look congruent. Okay, so let's mark A congruent to D, and let's mark B congruent to E. That's still the same. The corresponding angles, if the triangles are similar, are still congruent. Uh, do I need to mark C and F? No, why not? Why do I need to mark C and F congruent? How do I know they're already congruent? Third angles theorem. Yep, just a little doing a little review here. Now, the sides. If the triangles are similar, the sides do not have to be congruent, but they do need to be in the same ratio. Here's what I'm talking about. Let's call that one two. Let's call that one six. Three and nine, four, and 12. Are these triangles congruent? No, their corresponding sides are not congruent, but they are similar because everyone see that corresponding sides are in the same ratio. We all see that. Okay, next thing, sign for similar. No. It is called the tilde. Squiggly, you can go back in elementary school. All right? It's a tilde. Big boy, big girls. All right? Tilde. All right? That is the sign for similar. And yet, take a look. It's basically the congruent sign without the equal. Right? I am still going to have to write statements. Triangle so-and-so, similar to triangle so-and-so. And guess what's still got to match up? That's not going to change. Just like in the congruent statements you wrote, the sides and angles still need to match up. So I'll have triangle ABC. What you guys are going to have to get out of the habit of is what? What are you probably going to write down next automatically? Congruent, congruent. You just got to get out of that habit a little bit. Similar to triangle DEF. And finally, we're going to start talking about what's called a scale factor or similarity ratio, which is the ratio of the corresponding sides. What is the ratio of the corresponding sides? So I pick two sides. Let's go three to nine. There it is. So you can say three to nine. You could say one to three. We talked yesterday. Is this the only right way to write it? Nope. You could also go one third, three ninths. It's up to you. All right, but that's what I'm talking about. When I say, hey, what's the similarity ratio? What's the scale factor? What's the ratio of two corresponding sides? Do we see the difference between similar versus congruent? We see that big difference. All right, yes, the angles are still equal, but the sides are in a ratio now, which is called the scale factor similarity ratio. Questions from you guys? When you prove two triangles congruent, did you need all the sides and angles to be congruent? No. How many methods did we have? Five. And those methods required a lot less, right? All right. Well, I'm going to show you three methods today, how to prove triangles similar. And you don't need all of it. You don't need all these facts, all right? Three methods. The first one, angle, angle, AA. Some of you thought this used to be a way to prove triangles congruent. Remember those days? Some of you writing down AAA for me? Whew, all right. But this is a way to prove the triangle similar. Prove two pairs of angles congruent. Angle, angle. All right. Yes, Orion? We sure? 
Okay, calm it down. I have a question. Why is this angle, angle, and not angle, angle, angle? Because if I have two angles, what do I know? The third's already congruent, so I don't need to put the third A in there. Yes, angle, angle. All right, so we'll take a look at these two triangles here. Explain to me why they're similar. Explain to me why they are similar by angle, angle. Well, what did I give you already? I already gave you angle H congruent to angle S that was given to you. Can you find another pair of angles? Thank you for not saying O is congruent to O. Angle UOH is congruent to angle... I heard him, Emma. Calm down. SOE. Why is that true? What are they? This is all good review here. Vertical angles are congruent. I'm just kind of doing a mini proof here without the setup. Vertical angles congruent. And that's it. Now write me the similarity statement that says those are similar. You guys are going to love these proofs tomorrow because all you need to do is find two pairs of angles for me and you're done. They're similar. Uh, how are you going to name one triangle here? H-U-O. You got it. H-U-O. Similar. How many of you just wrote congruent? There you go. Have some self-respect. H-U-O similar to S-E-O. And then my reason now would be angle, angle. You got it. You got it. All right. Angle, angle done. Method number two looks pretty familiar. Side, angle, side, but a little different because the sides are not congruent anymore. The sides must be in the same ratio. And where's the angle still have to be? In the middle. In the middle. Yes, in the middle, everybody. So take a look at the example here. I got, a, I got R congruent to S. There's the angle. Now take the sides right now. 10 over, watch this, 10 over 15. Is that the same ratio as 12 over 18? By the way, how can you check if it is or not? Because I got all four different numbers up here. How do you know if two ratios are the same? I could cross multiply, perfect, or I could reduce these here. So I would have two thirds and two thirds. So either cross multiply and they come out to be the same or reduce them. So does everyone see side angle side here? All right, let's go to the example. Explain to me why these triangles are similar. Well, what do I have right now in A and D? And so A is congruent to D because you know what? Right angles are congruent. And what about the sides that surround the right angles? Are they in the same ratio? Is 8 over 6 the same ratio as 4 over 3? I know, quick multiplication, 24 equals 24, right? Check. All right, so write me a similarity statement. Triangle. A, B, C. How many are doing it right now? Nope. Similar to, if we go A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, now here's one thing you got to pay attention to. When you write, if you ever use this, the reason is not side, angle, side. That's the reason to prove triangle's congruent. These aren't congruent. You have to put the tilde in there with it, or the squiggly, all right? Because if you don't, that's the reason for triangles being congruent, which we're not doing. All good. Quick recap, one way to prove triangles congruent, angle, angle, and then side, angle, side similarity. Yes, final way, looks pretty familiar as well. 
The third and final way would be side, side, side similarity, which means I know nothing about the angles, but all three pairs of sides are in the same ratio. First question I always get with this method, how do I know which sides match up? I'll make it pretty easy for you. Small to small, big to big. Okay, oh yeah, pretty easy, right? Smallest to smallest, biggest to biggest. That's how you can tell if they're in the same ratio or not. Okay. Uh, quickly on this one, so eight over, I'm not, sorry. I should start with the smallest one, right? Five over 10, is that equal to 13 over? Sorry, I'm a still, how about eight over 16? And 13 over, and are all those in the same ratio? Yes, one half to one half to one half. And I can't stress this enough. Let's say those two are, but it's not in the same ratio as the third pair, no good. They're not similar. Okay, two out of three doesn't make you a winner here. It's got to be three out of three. All right. All right, now let's put all three methods together. Can you tell me if they are similar or not? Back yourself up with a reason. So let's look at that first one. Are these two triangles similar to each other? Oh, they are. What method would it be here? Angle, angle. I only see the given pair. Where's the other pair? The pair of verts. Yep. All right, here you go. Triangle. Need a good similarity statement here. Triangle. A, B. Okay, somebody wants to go A, B, X. Similar to R Q X by what method? Angle, angle. If you want to put the tilde with it, that's fine. It's not required because angle, angle is only used for similar triangles. All good there. How about the next two triangles? Oh, we got some options, right? We got some options because I gave you all three sides and I also gave you a right angle. So we have some options here. Do you want to test out side, 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 or do you want to test out side, angle, side? Side, side, side. Okay. Do it, do it whatever you want. I'll, I'll go side, 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 sure. So if I'm going to test out side, 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 the nine probably matches up with the 12. Is that in the same ratio as the 12 and 16? Is that in the same ratio as the hypotenuse, 15 and 20? And they all come out to be 3 fourths. So triangle, who wants to start the first triangle? A W L similar. Make sure you got the similar sign too. X P M. Uh, my method was side 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 similarity. If you did side angle side, both ways. Make sure you have the tilde because we didn't prove them congruent, so I need it there. All right, everyone, ready to roll for this next one here. Okay, well, the only method that may work would be what? Side angle side, because I have the vertical angles, but I need to check if the sides are in the same ratio. All right, so I'll say, all right, the three would may probably match up with the four. Is that in the same ratio as four to eight? Same ratio? Nope, so pretty easy on this one. They are not similar. All right. Questions from you guys at all? Last step for today is, okay, they're similar. What can I do with their sides now? All right, if I'm trying to find a missing side, what can I do? All right, if they are similar. And this might be, this is probably in my top five word problem of the year, all right, that we do. Uh, Natasha, you can read about Natasha.
She places a mirror on the ground, 24 feet from the base of an oak tree. That's pretty important that it's oak, not maple or redwood or anything. All right, it's pretty important. She's going to walk backwards so she can see the top of the tree in the middle of the mirror. And at this point, you can see that her eyes are five and a half feet above the ground and her feet are four feet from the mirror. Let's find the height of the oak tree. Okay. Uh, before we find the height of the oak tree, I have a true fact probably would be uh, Natasha's got some time on her hands, huh? All right. And what are other people thinking as they walk by Natasha with a mirror on the ground? And All right. First thing, let's just go, why are these triangles similar? Every, every problem we do, I want to explain why the triangles are similar so we can do what we're about to do. First thing is, anytime you have something attached to the ground, we can assume it's perpendicular. Okay, there's no leaning tower of pieces here. All right, so we're gonna, we can assume that Natasha's perpendicular with the ground and so is the oak tree. All right, based on how she, based on how she, where she put the mirror, that angle that's formed from the mirror to the tree and the mirror to, it looks like her forehead there, are congruent. So why are these triangles similar? By what method? Angle, angle. Okay, so we've established the triangles are similar. And this is the first exercise I did with you today. If the triangles are similar, what do you know about the corresponding sides? They're not equal, but they're in the same ratio. ratio all right, so once we establish similar triangles, I can pick pairs of corresponding sides and say the ratios are equal. So can somebody give me one pair of corresponding sides? So 4 and 24, because they're similar, are in the same ratio as 5 and a half and the height of the oak tree, which we'll call x. Please just make sure, take a look. Hey, take a look. Hold on. Hold on, champs. Am I allowed to flip the X and the 5.5? No. See how I started with Natasha over here? The other ratio has to start with her as well. Okay, the order needs to match. And yes, we do need to cross multiply. I'm not gonna do these for free. Let's get going. And how tall is that oak tree? 33 feet. Yes, please attach the units. 33 feet. Any issues there? Going. Okay, number two. I know this is honors, so I'm going to make sure you prove to me that they're similar before I allow you to write the ratios are equal. Because the ratios are not equal unless we know the triangles are similar. So let's first talk why are those two, tri everyone see the two triangles in the diagram, the smaller one and the bigger one. Why are these two triangles similar? You got angle, angle, side, angle, side, and side, side, side. First, do we see an angle they share? Everyone see the top angle they share? Everyone sees that one. Okay, are the sides surrounding it in the same ratio? Well, let's check, ready? 12, everyone see this side here of 12? Don't tell me it matches up with eight because it doesn't match up with eight. Eight is not a full side in either triangle. What's the full side in the bigger triangle that matches up with 12? Okay, so watch real quick. 20 over, 12 over 20, is that in the same ratio as What's the 15 match up with in the large triangle? Not 10, but 25. Are the guys, are these in the same ratio? 12 over 20 and 15 over 25. Yes, so give me the reason why these two triangles are similar. Side angle, side similarity. Everyone see that? All right, now that they're similar, give me a ratio of two corresponding sides. You get a choice here. 
Give me the ratio of two corresponding sides right now. We'll go to the well here. 28, look at that, first one. Okay, ready? Pick a side for me on one triangle, Liz. On the, let's go small triangle, pick a side. Okay, 12 matches up with what in the big triangle? There's the ratio. 12 over 20. You could have done 15 over 25. All right. X, is it in the large triangle or the smaller one? So that's going to go down here with the 20. And what's the X correspond with in the smaller triangle? There it is right here. Everyone all right with that ratio? Not the only way you could write it. All right, but one of the ways. And you will get a repeating decimal here. It happens from time to time. About 28.3 repeating, so I'm just going to write 28 and a third here. There are no units, so I'm not going to put any on. Are you okay setting up the ratios? Because today you're going to set them up. Tomorrow you'll solve them by factoring and using quadratic formula. Any issues? Three, quick review. What are those arrows again? Parallel. Before you write a ratio, prove to me they're congruent. Prove to me they're similar. Happens to the great ones. Prove to me they're similar. Parallel lines. First of all, do they share an angle? Okay, so they do have a reflexive angle up here. There's one, one angle. And anybody see any types of angles formed by these parallel lines? This is all good review. Hi, Connor. Corresponding. You could go these two here or the two on the other side. So why are these two triangles similar? By what method? Angle, angle. All right, now that they're similar, can somebody find the ratio of two corresponding sides for me? Give me the ratio. Vincent, three to eight. Love it. Three and eight. There's a ratio. Okay, I'm taking three, which is in the smaller triangle. What other side do I know in the smaller triangle? Four. Woo! And here we go. Who's on top of their game? What does the four match up with in the larger triangle? Is it four plus X? Usually I get four X. Yeah, that's right. Say it again, Orion. Yeah, that's multiplication. I don't, I'm doing what to these two sides? Adding them. Four plus X. And yes, you'll get another decimal here. on the next page. Oh, I still got to go over that. And about 66, yeah, 6 and uh, 2 thirds. You're getting 0. 0.6667, right? So about 6 and 2 thirds. Any, hey, are we okay setting up the equations, or the proportions? Are we okay finding a, a ratio, setting equal to the unknown? Last thing we have to discuss, and then you can go on your own. The ratio of the sides is the same as the ratio of whatever the perimeters are in. So if the sides are in a ratio of 1 to 2, so are the perimeters. Okay? Whatever the ratio of the sides are, it matches the ratio of the perimeters, which is what all this mumbo-jumbo up here is telling you if you know the ratio of the sides it's the same as the ratio of the perimeters so why is that important take a look at this final example for today they're telling me these quadrilaterals are similar find the scale factor let's start there let's start there before we do anything else find the scale factor of mnqp2 xyzw what's the only side i know in this smaller polygon Four. I need to find out what side four matches up with in the bigger one. And, and in case I can't turn it visually, remember, 
just like congruent statements, the similar statement will match it up for you. So if I look at the similar statement, what does WX match up with? WX matches up with MQ or QM. So if I look over at MQ or QM, it's how long? Eight. So the scale factor. Ooh, ooh. This is important. Four to eight and eight to four are two different scale factors. Order matters. What was I asking for in the problem? Find the scale factor of MNPQ. Which side do I put first? Eight. Two, we said it matched up with four. If you want to write two to one, that's fine as well. But four to eight is not going to cut it. One half is not going to cut it. All right, it had to be in this specific order. And find the perimeter of each polygon. All right, can we quickly find the perimeter of the bigger one? I gave you all the sides. That'll turn out to be... 17 and 17, 34, okay. Now watch, here's what I'm trying to get through to you, this last point. You do not need to find all three sides over here. What's the ratio of the sides you know already? What's the ratio of the sides? Eight to four, two to one, however you wanna write it. That is the same ratio the perimeters are in. What perimeter do I already know? 34, does that go with the larger or the smaller? Larger or the smaller? You could find the perimeter of the smaller one. They're in the same ratio. All right, so I do not have to find every individual side and add it up. Whatever the ratio of the sides are, it's the same as the perimeters. So the ratio, the perimeter of the smaller one, perimeter of the smaller one, 17. Looks like we have some book work for tonight. So either you can use your Chromebook or your actual textbook back there. Let's get it rolling. <laughs>